It's the Ping Pong World Championship. London is playing host to the finest players on the planet. 64 started out, we're now down to the last four. It's semi-final time and leading the way for the host nation, Chris Doran. He faces increasing pressure as the race to be crowned champion intensifies. London is the host city for the 2018 edition of the Ping Pong World Championship. Plenty to talk about from the quarterfinals, including the demise of the defending champion Yan Wei Hao in the opening match. He fell to the efforts of Liang Zhui. As expected, it was a tight opening set. Yan onto the top of the net and off the table. So hit that too low. Oh, fantastic. Look at that control. Beautiful. You can see the hours and hours of training that we've gone into the old play to produce these strokes. Plenty of topspin on the ball. They say with these sandpaper bats, the very low friction, that's the point of the exercise, is to play a form of the game where you can't get a lot of spin. But they do try and get the little bits 13, of spin that 14. they can, especially topspin, and also, Tony, some kicking serves. Yeah, absolutely. The players are getting better and better at that, making that, that ball kick on the second bounce. They are, 15, and that's just 13, gone off. Game match. At that stage, Yan on course to defend his title, but the second set looked in doubt. Yan's been taken three a couple of times. He was beaten in a qualifier that recovered and, and Nine, qualified 14. in the event last year. So people are getting close to him. He went through. Champion last year. Game at Mr. Leung. In the third and deciding set, Chui had the advantage and his eye on the place in the last four. But the power in the top seven spin is getting. 7 14. He's one of the best table tennis players in China. He plays China Super League. He's converted this to the sandpaper back game very, very well. Oh, what a great shot. Brilliant back out from Yan. Game at Leung. Su Leung, 2 1 to win. Thomas Sadelek had impressed in the last round. His heroic efforts ensured he'd featured in the quarterfinals. But once there, he just didn't have the answers when faced with Wang Shibo. Game and match. So Wang takes the match. Wang Shibo, 34-year-old from Xuxiao, through to the semi-finals. The English were guaranteed at least one player in the last four. Would it be Chris Doran or Andrew Bagley? Doran grabbed the first set and looked good in the second. Beautiful backhand down the line again. So that's a net, it's on. So confident, the backhand down the line has been the killer. Wow. Andrew's still there, coming back, he's not given up yet. Bagley, not going to give him anything. If you can just make him wobble mentally, he might be able to get himself back in. It's a long shot. Bagley will fight to the death, into the oh, crossover. Match point, Doran. Would there be another European in the last four? That question could only be answered by Philip Zemanski, but he faced a tough challenge in the form of Huan Jung Gang. The man from China took the first set and looked good in the second. Is this the end for the great defensive player from Gdansk in Poland? That's popped up a little bit. Huang accelerating. No! And that's enough. Huang's delighted to be in the semi-final. All of which leaves us with a semi-final lineup that will provide a new name on the trophy. The defending champion Yan is out, and former winner Bagley is also sidelined, leaving us with Zhui against Wang and Doran to face Huang. We start our coverage with the all-Chinese clash between Liang Zhui and Wang Shibo. Commentary for this match comes from Tony West and Colin Wilson. This is going to be a fascinating one. We're going to see 
certainly one Chinese player in the final of the competition again. Last year it was Yan Wei Hao, but he has been knocked out by the man in yellow and black, Shui Liang. Fantastic player, qualified in the last chance qualifier, came from China just to try to qualify out of 80 players, got in the last six places, he made it. He was one of 11 Chinese players that qualified for the last 64 and to play here at Alexandra Palace. He's dropped the odd game on the way through, you can see there, beating Russians, Hungarians, Irish, Slovakian, and then in the semi-final, world champion Yan, two games to one. So this is the new star of the show. Beautiful player, lovely rangy forehand, plenty of topspin. And he's up against Wang Shibo in the red and black from China. You'll notice he's got the penhold grip. He lost to Fleming in the group matches. Fleming's now out of the competition, having been beaten by Huang, 15-14 in the final game. And Shibo, penhold grip, uses the same side of the bat for backhand and for forehand. Very, very different grip. Classical Chinese grip. Both players right-handed. Personally, I back Shui Liang. The moment I saw him playing in the last chance qualifier in Harlow, I said, this guy is something special. I don't care if he didn't qualify in China. He's certainly improved. He's a great young Lovely. player. Plays in the Chinese Super League for table tennis, as well as the Chinese Professional Super League for sandpaper table tennis, which is now live on stream each month from China. So this form of the game is going somewhere. And I'm very pleased Lovely. to say, Who's popped back in to see us? Gavin Rumgay. Yeah, it's great to be back in the box now for the, the first of our semi-finals. We, we've seen some fantastic matches so far, uh, and the pick for me was Chris Duran managing to, to overcome Andrew Bagley in that quarter-final. amazing? Absolutely, going for every shot, believing, Two, you know, and, and used to obviously practicing against Andrew, uh, you know, numerous times. Yeah, training partners, but. Bagley came up against a different opponent to the one that he's trained against in Doran because Doran took the game, I think, to a new level. Do you think that's the best ping pong we've ever seen over a best of three? I think it was close to it. I mean, I've seen once or twice uh, when Maxim Shmirev was at his very best and, and he was looking to pivot uh, on, you know, almost every shot. Yeah, his his footwork was you know, sublime four or five years ago, but, you know, really hats off to, to Chris Doran in that quarter final. Yeah. So Wang serving at three all, the pen holder in the red Four, shirt. Three. Two serves each, up to 15, best of three games. So the money's racking up as well. Losing semi finalists here. This is a semi final. Loser Dream, takes $5,000. Winner goes through a minimum of $10,000 in the final. Winner takes $20,000 US dollars. Four, five. So, thanks to our sponsors, we've got a very tight match here. Wang 5-4 up. Shui Liang being tamed a little bit here by, by Wang. Wang, Wang playing a very ball. compact game, hitting over the top of the ball, very close to the table, Tony. Yeah, he's a good player, isn't he? I, I really like him. I like the way he goes across the ball sideways with his penal grip on the, on the backhand. Keeps it really, really Five, low. Six. And I think with what uh, Shui having played against him a few times before i can imagine i think we'll see him go wide to the forehand quite a lot away from that backhand. Eight, seven, five. it's always very difficult to tell you know when the, the chinese players play against each other who's going to come out on top obviously they've got a fantastic practice structure seven, over there uh, at the beijing national center you know and, and obviously as you've seen in the the last quarter final uh, how the number one seed you know came unstuck there uh, if you've beaten Wang someone in practice three or four times, it's amazing then how you have confidence. Yeah, so Schwer has nothing to be scared of now. Maybe the fact that Wang at the other end, so consistent, misses one now, of course, Seven, and I said eight. that, but generally so consistent. He beats Sadilek of uh, the Czech Republic 15 5, 15 6 in the quarterfinals. That's pretty comprehensive destruction points wise. So a contained game, but a very consistent one. So Shue has got to play with his rangy power and the long strokes and top spins, but he can't afford to be making any unforced errors at all. 
nine eight. Beautiful scene at the Alexandra Palace. It's been packed all day. Wang, nine all. The last 16 played this afternoon in the quarter-final, semi-final and final being played tonight. Bit of a towel down, nothing in it at all. And it is quite hot and sweaty here at the, the Alexandra Palace. You know, from the practice hall, you know, 20 metres to the left of us, all the way through to this main table Ten, one. It's nine. quite hot and stuffy and it's, yeah. you know, that's a test for your concentration out there. It is indeed. We've been saying that endurance is a major part of this, especially if you're the second semi-finalist, because Dre, after this semi-final, the, the, the winning player is going to get a long break and be able to recover. After the second semi-final, there's a limited time for them to recover before they've got to go on in the final, and it's not only best of three, it's best of five. So, for example, does Doran have the endurance to win the semi and the final? 9-12. Well... It'll be interesting to find out. It's uh, never been done, I believe, winning from the uh, second, playing the second semi-final. Yeah, and I'm 13, sure that's not the, the, the reason, the only reason. But um, it is a physical test for all of these players, especially at this stage 14, of the championships. Nine. They've been playing since noon yesterday. They've had to win two uh, matches, sometimes three if they've lost one in their group. Then the last 32, the last 16, the quarterfinals, and now the semi. So it will be taking its toll on the concentration Game. as much as on the body. It's the different nine. muscle groups that you have to utilise as well in the in the ping pong. I woke up this morning, 8:30 a.m. Uh, stomach muscles absolutely really? screaming. Were they? <laughs> yeah. Well, you put a lot into <laughs> into it yesterday, and. Uh, you're, a, what, a point away from being here today in the centre court? Yeah. So, unlucky Second for Gavin game. yesterday. Unlucky Once also for his compatriot Ian Johnston, Double. who did really well. Played and got out of his group. Wonderful. Well, we've had a great start from Wang in the first game. I would imagine most people would have had Joy as favourite for this match, One but uh, Wang's got a terrific start, so consistent. Well, I did. I thought uh, Joy was going to have enough. Wang's so consistent, isn't he? And you can see what, what you have to do with uh, some of the, the big power players is to try and tame them. And when you get them playing slower balls for the consistency, then you know you've got into their heads. Love three. It's one of the, the toughest shots to play when, when someone gives that, that ball to you that's got no pace and then you're trying to generate a little bit of pace off that. That's when you see the mistakes racking up. Yeah, so it's not all about just hitting the ball as hard as you can every time. It's amazing, you can see when the camera's right behind Wang, when he plays that backhand, you can see the ball curling through the air. It's amazing because he goes ball across one. it so quickly. Yeah, so side spin. Causing the ball to curve through the air. Banana shot. Straight one five. And Wang, a classic exponent of it, using that. You see they're coming across the ball, pushing the ball wide of Shui Liang's backhand. One, six. And he's a frustrated man at the moment. Nothing's going right for him. Top of the net and off the table. Does he have to change his game or does he just have to get his own game going more consistently? Bang, six, In some two. ways, I think he's just got to get his own game going more consistently rather than change everything. See the attack on that serve. It's really important with the, the sandpaper rackets to accelerate on every shot. As soon as that there's that little bit of doubt and you decelerate on the shot, it's amazing how many times it hits the net and goes off. Oh, two fantastic forehand drives Joy, from three, Joy seven. there. One across to the backhand really wide, one to the forehand. You see that Wang was ready for it, covered it, and the third one went off. He's just asking Joy Four, too seven. many questions. So good at blocking back the power shot at him, isn't he? He doesn't run back like a lot of players and try and chop it back. He just stays up, faces it, just blocks it back. Yeah. So I have to say, for everything that we're saying about the One, backhand eight, block and the backhand four. drive with the side spin, which is really safe and it's really, really close to stop the other player attacking, his forehand block, kind of a block Nine, plus four. block and mini counter, 
um, I think is the shot that's put Wang ahead. Jue, ball, ten. Tough for Jue from here, because Wang, as we know, is so consistent, he's not going to give him any free points. Ball, eleven. Well, I think Shrey's found his limit now. He's played brilliantly all the way through the championships. He was my pick for this semi-final. But Wang has tied him down. Wang, Not a lot that Shrey can do about four. it. Where can he go from here, Gavin? Anywhere? I suppose now you've, you've just got to, to attack freely. You, you've got to, you know, as many players have tried so far, attack to the wide forehand, but it seems difficult with that side spin. Yeah, where are the unforced errors from Wang? Wang Shibo, 34 years old. Look at this. There's nothing at all that the young man can do. I think in table tennis, if he could get into the Chinese team, he'd be ranked in the top 100 in the world. He's taken it as far as he can. And it's the end of the road, I think, for Shui. Yeah, and there we have 15, it, 15-9, 15-4. Wang Shibo, the 34-year-old, into the final with ease, and he'll play the winner of Chris Duran and Huang, and that match will be on next. Welcome back to the World Ping Pong Championship. We have the name of our first man into the final, Wang Shibo. He overcame Liang Zhue in two straight sets to book his place in the final. The question of who he will play will be answered in our next match, featuring England's Chris Doran and China's Huang Jung Gang. Commentary from Tony West, Gavin Runge and Colin Wilson. with the semi-final. I've got both Gavin Rumgate and Tony West with me. We're huddled around, studying in, seeing what uh, Dennis has got to say to Chris Doran. But Chris is up against Huang Jungang, the Iron Man, 43 years old, from Zhuzhou in China. He's made his way here by defeating in the, in the last 16 the previous double runner-up of this championship, Alex Fleming, 15-14 in the third game. And then in the quarterfinals, you just saw that he beat the Polish defender, Philip Szymanski, very comprehensively, 15-9, 15-5. Doran played some of the best ever ping-pong that we've ever seen, excepting, Garin, Gavin says, possibly some of Maxine Smiras's greatest games. And... Uh, the question is, will Huang have a way to tame the Doran mix of touch, class and power? I think for me, this is down to, does Doran one. really believe he can win this tournament? The prize money's mounting up now. This is, this is the difference between $5,000 and $10,000. You know, and, and this, is, this is pivotal in his career. If he can reach the final here, uh, it's huge. Credit to Chris Durant coming through that last match there against Andrew Bagley, two games to nil, and what an exciting match that one was. And it's one of the few times that a person's reached the semi-finals without dropping a game. 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, all the way through the tournament so far. He's been faultless, hasn't he, really? Um, and that peaked when he played Bagley in the last game. Let's hope there's a bit more to come still. Yeah. The only game that Huang has dropped is when he played Fleming. And he could have dropped the whole match. It was 14 all in the final game. Sudden death point, all down to one point. Very, very exciting. I wonder when they'll take the double point ball, which is the one that they can use to, as a joker to win two points on their serve. We'll explain that to you again when it happens. But Chris was so confident in the last one. We're just sitting here wondering whether can Chris can keep up that level or whether he's actually peaked. And uh, it's impossible for any human being to maintain that standard. Just listen to the crowd. They're all having a great time here. Great party atmosphere. Chris Doran, Huang Jungang, second semi-final. It will be Wang Shibo to play in the final. The winner of the Asian qualifier in the other semi-final. 
So he's now the finalist, but in front of us, Huang Junggang is in Chris's way. He's got to take down two Chinese players to win the championship. And what a great crowd pleaser Chris is. The crowd's gone bonkers and they've only played one point. Interesting return of serve, that, wasn't it? It got a, a fast topspin serve and he just came in and chop blocked it straight off the bounce. Really awkward for Huang. Chinese players in the world. They're so good, uh, you know, playing the predictable way, playing fast on the diagonal, and you have to change out of that game. If it's yeah. their practice mode, you've got no chance. Yeah. And uh, as we know, if you do uh, regular footwork practices in table tennis, lines and diagonals is much harder when you're doing the lines. to cover more ground. It's a more difficult shot to play because it's a shorter distance to the end of the table and off the end. But the crowd here, a large majority of the crowd here getting behind Chris, but a very, very enthusiastic and noisy contingent from China supporting Huang. Two points all. You can see the drums on the far side. We'll hear those, I'm sure. That's a beautiful backhand down the line from Chris. Forehand down the line as well. Wang managed to tame him in that one. Wang's got a fantastic Three, backhand serve as well that was causing huge problems for Fleming in, in the last 16 match. The way that he's able to just contact the ball, you know, just millimetres above the, the white line to accelerate through the ball. Yes, and to make the ball kick, especially long down the diagonal. This is the shot, isn't it, from Chris? That big, powerful backhand. If that's flowing, that's what wins him this match. Yeah. Convinced of that. I love that follow through. Accelerating through the ball. That's, uh... Just getting a bit of brush on the ball. So not hitting the, the back of the ball. He's just brushing the back and top of the ball. Getting the top spin that's possible. Lots of top spin there from Chris. Amazing. How do you make a winner from that distance? Oh, it completely fooled me. I thought this backhand's coming down the line again. And you see, just in this next one, oh, goes please. the other way. I was convinced he was going down the line there. Hit him straight in the body. Great body shot. Chris tried to do a bit too much there. He tried to go the other way, didn't he? he tried to make oh, it look oh, like he was he going did. to the back end and switch the other way. And with a time. modern sponge bat, that would have gone on because it would have, would have connected onto his bat. But with these bats, the ball slides off if you try and side spin it too much. I tell you, the hats off to Chris early doors for reading the Huang service Five, because we've four. seen so many players in the first set against Huang getting off to a slow start. Yeah, so let's see that backhand service again. The, Chris is not having any trouble with the serve, getting into the rally against the serve quite happily. This match continues after the break. Welcome back to London for the World Ping Pong Championship. A thrilling match on the main table as Chris Doran takes on Huan Jung Gang. It's all level midway through the opening set. Fantastic uh, training build-up to this, where he, he went out to Germany to hit with Alexander Fleming, and I'm sure that meant the world of good to him. Five or six intensive days of training is exactly what he needed. Yeah, spins that one up, and the slower ball catching Huang out. So Chris is so good at change of pace. Yeah. A low ball to the forehand, higher ball, greater flight there to the long to the backhand. As is sometimes the case, the Chinese players struggle a little bit. If you can play with change of pace, change of height, they like the variation less than some of the top European players. Oh, such a clever forehand, that. He really put some extra height into it. It's a horrible shot, isn't it, Gavin? When it's bouncing high into your backhand. You see a lot of the, the better players here. When, when the ball comes up, you've actually got to wait for it to come back down to net height. If you do that, you've got more chance then to connect and get the ball on. When you take on the shots from a bit higher, actually the trajectory is not right to put the ball on. 
You know, that top spin it doesn't come down so quick, does it? Dorrance picking the ball off the net, so when the other player hits the top of the net and it comes over, he's able to take one giant step in if he needs to and pick the ball up, keep it low and maintain his position in the rally 50-50. A lot of players, the ball, the ball hits the net, they don't reach it and it's big trouble. But let's see that Chinese crowd getting behind Hoi and they're being matched by Chris Doran's supporters. Great drumming. Staying closer than I've seen him before as well, taking that back end quite early and still producing the power. Fantastic. Into the crossover, wide of the forehand, into the backhand. Huang tried to counter that with a fast one, but he's not up to this level of power. I spoke to Andrew Bagley after his quarter-final match with Chris Duran, obviously very disappointed, but he said hats off to Chris on that very sporting manner that Andrew has. He said, just too good on this occasion. I was sitting there in the crowd watching it, and um, we, we were all just saying there's absolutely nothing Andrew can do about this. It was uh, phenomenal, and he's not far below that here. Again, Chris copes with the net cord against him. But unable to unwind himself from the disadvantage in that rally. Has a look at Dennis Neal, England international from the 60s, 70s and 80s. He's keeping Chris closely to account for what he's doing on this table. Is that the Chinese Phil Collins? Maybe not quite as talented, but certainly louder. Left serve, take it again. Go, go, Chris Duran. Oh, I don't believe that. Look how quickly he turns on this. Bang. Yeah, see, so spun on his toe. 11, Get the ball down the other side. There, spun around. Double point ball for Mr. Duran. Chris's peripheral vision is so good. He sees the other player. Which way they want to go. or forwards, chooses the power. Double point ball for Chris. Is the double point ball. Another two for Chris. He's going for the kill. He almost grimaced before he hit that. He knew he wasn't quite in the right position. So that's a bit of a fail on the double point ball, Gavin. And, and his feet jumped off the ground as well. As soon as you do that, it's a little bit more unpredictable. Power needs to go through the ground so that you can go forwards on the shot. Yeah. Nine, 11. Ground's the only thing you've got to push off. Whatever you're in the air as well, you can't change direction. Oh, I don't believe this. Forehand to forehand topspin. See Hoang's backhand. The what length of follow through on Hoang's backhand to get that one back. Now there, Hoang stood up to Chris's pressure and that standard. Well done, right yeah. to celebrate that. What's well done, the Iron Man. Yeah, absolutely. Then 11. Out. The Chinese coach looking a bit stony-faced in the background, but Huang now is only one point behind. Is this scary times for Chris Doran? He's overhit it to the corner. He tried to go off the side of the table to get extra width, and he ran out of the table on the side. 12-10, Doran. But Doran, no more double-point ball in this match. Dennis Neal studiously well, looking yeah. over. Dennis is virtually going to climb over, isn't he, and play it for him. That's the commitment, dedication, confidence that Dennis brings to Chris. Another one for Doran. He stopped the rock. Hawang nearly got back to him, but Doran's pulled away again despite losing the double point ball. Just not quite in the right position. You see Chris there driving up on the ball, which was the right thing to do there. Yeah, great upward motion to the legs. Good use of the floor there, using his power to push off the floor. Sometimes upwards, sometimes forwards. Touched, I think. That is so close to Chris being at game point. If you just watch, this hits the end of the table. There, Chris has gone, look, point. It touched. That 
could have been five game points to Chris Doran. But instead, it's 11-13, and if he loses this point, it's level. Such is the importance, Tony, of the double point ball. Great time to play it, isn't it? Chris will be disappointed. Chris will be disappointed with that edge. And now he can level it all up in one go. So exciting. He's back level. Well, how brave are you to go to this person's strength as well? Serve to the Chris Durand backhand, that is brave. Yeah. 13 all. <laughs> He's loving the challenge. And you'll see Hoang now staring at Chris. Not with aggression, but just to puzzle out what's going on in Chris's mind, guessing what's the best thing to do. What are the risks to take? What are the risks to avoid? It's all about judgment. No, oh, not again. That hit the top of the net, but did it hit the edge as well? Yeah, I think so. I think that touched the edge. Yeah, it did, yeah. Unbelievable. So Chris pulled away, but because of the double point ball success of Hoang and two lucky points, Doran's game point down now. What a turnaround. What a turnaround. He must be so disappointed. Dennis has got to turn that around in seconds. Welcome back to Alexandra Palace in North London and the second of our semi finals. Chris Doran, under pressure after losing the first set, has it all to do in the second. Commentary from Tony West, Gavin Wungay and Colin Wilson. Chinese players delighted to come across and play at this championships. They're loving it. Second game. But Mr. there are only Doran two Chinese serve. left in. Huang in front of Doran now, and if he can beat, defeat him, it will be Wang Shibo in the final. More sandpaper treatment from... Huang Zhunggang. We're used to this now. He finds that the bat is a little bit sharp on its neck, so he just gives it a little bit of sandpaper so he doesn't chafe his middle finger. Because, of course, he hasn't played with this bat. He's obviously not Scottish. You know, you've got to draw blood at some stage no, during the match, don't you? Well, yeah, you've got to do... You've, <laughs> you've, got, to, you've got to do that just to show you're trying. Well, we'll let Hoang just be quietly professional about it, Gavin. Big backhand from Chris. Hoang keeping him tied down on the backhand. The balls they're able to block and the balls they're able to retrieve and return without playing a weak shot themselves is just absolutely phenomenal. Wondering if at some stage Chris might throw in a few back spins away from the table. He's so good at it. I think it, you know if he gets a few points behind, he may try and change it, um, or at least play one, make make uh, Juan lift it, and then counter that ball. Well, it might be time for a change of pace. Until now, Chris has been dominant with the power. Juan's tuned into him a tiny bit. He's a game Two, down. One. Is it time to just mix it up, even if it's only for three or four points? Yeah, he may have been put off by how good he was against the backspin of Szymanski, but Chris can follow it up if he just lifts it, though. So it's a different game yeah, if Chris does it. Huang was consistent against it. But what Chris can do that Szymanski can't do is hit his way out of trouble, and he did it there. He's listening. Two, oh. Well, it's nice that we're tuned in to Chris Doran and Dennis Neal, channeling their coaching style. But he's mixed that one up, and that's going to make Huan give him an extra thing to think about. That was clever there. It would have been far easier to attack on the diagonal there. Took a little bit of a risk to go to the short side and blast the ball down the line. I think Chris mustn't settle with going fully defensive. He's got to mix it up. I agree. Well, he'll be 
the most popular of popular winners if he gets this. So if he can settle and Three just points. get himself winning 55% of the points to 45, then he'll gradually pull away in this match. You can't guarantee any one point, but over a period of time, if you think you've got the right tactics, then you'll gradually, gradually pull away. Bagley showed that in many games. Doran has taken him Three, out. Four. And he's got to take up the mantle now of that power, consistency and variation. And wouldn't you feel as well that at 43 years old, you're going to feel it a little bit physically as this game progresses? Uh, yeah, I was feeling it physically when I was 43, Gavin, and I'm feeling it now, just watching. Yeah. Maybe he's reached the limit of his endurance. Well, I mean, Swansky may have helped Chris because Fine had to hit a huge amount of forehands in, in that last round. And every one of those takes a lot of effort, a lot more than it looks. So with an average of 10 shots per rally for Hoang to get through Szymanski, he's had to play about 400 forehand attacks to get through Szymanski. That's going to tire him out. That's going to give the advantage to Chris Doran against the older man. I can see Huang there just, you know, flexing a little bit, the hip flexors, stretching a little bit. So, yeah, maybe that's a good sign for Chris. Let's hope so. Good length on that first backhand from Chris. Down the line again, twice. Huang's footwork, good. What's Chris saying? I don't know what he's trying to tell us, guys. I think he's saying, finally, I managed to play down the line. Oh, OK. Get into the Huang forehand. Without, without the other guy hitting the edge on the end of the table. So, Doran back in the lead. Oh, oh that was a high backhand. That's the one that he's done across court. He managed to so many serve, people wasn't it? In theory, he should be higher, a little bit slower, therefore, and you can crack it. But just the change of pace just puts you off a little bit. Chris is going to have to use every ounce of intelligence to defeat this man tactically and mentally. He has mixed it up well the last few points. Seven, five. So he knows now that maybe he can't just blast him off. Towards the end of Bagley, he was playing so well with the power he could stick to it. But at the beginning with Bagley, it was the mixing of the shots that was giving Chris the success. And maybe he's got to go back to that tactic and just be a little bit more patient. I'm lucky you saw Chris six. drive upwards, so it didn't quite reach the top of the net. Both players understanding the, the spin so well. Yeah. Chris just adding fades of side spin. Three shots there. Chris Doran used side spin. Two backhands with, with across the ball to take the ball away from the forehand. And then two forehands where he's curving the ball away from Hoang's forehand. Six, eight. And to do that under this pressure is an absolutely masterful world-class play. 8-6 to Doran, Hoang, two serves to come. <laughs> Hoang plays into the crossover and gets Chris away from the table as a result. Szymanski struggled here, great body shot. Yeah, absolutely, that's what he did against Szymanski, wasn't it? When he got the, power, the opportunity to hit with power, hit it right to the body. And you see Seven, here, eight. actually, perfect placement. And it, he probably wouldn't hit the ball as well if he hadn't had... 25 minutes against Szymanski in the, in the previous match. Yeah, that's the downside for Chris. If he does play backspin, he's done those 400 top spins against Szymanski just about 20 minutes ago. Still, we'll see as, this, as the physical toll starts to take it on all the players in this championship. It's where Hoang's so clever, though, isn't it? Because against Szymanski, he just lifted the chops and took his time. He knows he can't do that with Chris, so he was going harder the start, not giving Chris that opportunity. I feel now as well, Huang is starting to direct the ball a little bit more to the Duran forehand. I think Chris is quite pleased to have got away with that one. <laughs> wow. Nine, 
look at that release of energy. It's focused and controlled. When the point's over, the emotion floods out, and then he's got to regroup for the next point. Huang's backhand covers the wide backhand so well. It's by a centimetre. Looks Nine. to the sky. Oh. But I think he's just got to look forward and stay focused. A few signals from Dennis Neal in the corner for Chris at this stage. But Chris just slightly out of position there. Just need to move across a few inches to the right. He would have made that. Nothing in it. Who can get to 15? Slow ball from Chris, off the net, well dealt with. What beautiful control from the hand of Chris Doran. He's absolutely one of the best players in the world at retrieving shots like that. You know, it's his understanding of spinning to stay calm. So many players, someone gets a net and you rush yeah, in on the rush ball. In. You've got too much body weight behind the ball, you can't keep it short. But Chris did well, didn't take the point, sadly. Are we biased here? I think so. All respect to Huang. Love the way he plays. Oh, and there's an edge for Chris Doran. He's celebrating the fact that he's got one. Huang says to Dennis Neal, I can't complain at that. He knows he's had the ride of the luck so far. And he knows he's just got to give that one in good heart. What fantastic sportsmanship. Coaches involved with the conversation as well. At Dan, last, oh. does this mean we'll have a change? Chris wants the, the crowd behind him even more. Backhand down the line twice. Brilliant, Chris. Crowd on the feet. Chris's belief is back. Can he worm his way out of this second game? Scrape to 15, go away, have a chat with Dennis Neal and come back for a dominant third game. Chris is stuck away from the table, but coming in with power. Oh. Yeah, can you play that many shots hard without expecting to miss one? I mean, 11. Oh. he just can't believe what Huang's getting back. I'm sure they've got a normal table tennis rubber on both sides of the racket at the moment. You can't do that with high friction modern rubbers. Never mind with the bat with no spin. What was the rackets I was using? We need a let there. Someone calling out from the crowd just after the server served the, served the ball. 11 all. So the umpire determining that's got to be replayed. The crowd getting too excited there. The idea is that we cheer in between the points, but you've got to be quiet again to let the receiver prepare for the return of serve. <laughs> 11 all. Bouncy serve. Chris dealt with it. Great backhand down the line. Hawang is starting to soak up that backhand down the line now. So close, wasn't it? His last backhand. I was convinced it was on. Oh, 11. Painful. Just took it just a fraction too early, though. Even for Chris's high level, he usually has the confidence to just wait for that ball to drop yeah, down to net height. Just stepped out to it a little bit. Wasn't quite within his control area in front of his body. Oh, no, taken out. And that, Great serve. Yeah, and that wasn't the bouncy one. It was the flat low one, Gary, and that you said is so difficult for all sandpaper players to recover and the, from. The, the side 13. and chop serve, normally what would happen there is you, you lift it, you know, and you would get that ball on, but normally that... In this game, that's just going to quickly change the topspin and throw it into the net. Well, for many reasons, I want Chris to get back to this, but I think the main one is just to get, give me another game of it to watch. Yeah, it's just it's incredible stuff. Fabulous to watch. Get on with it. Someone's urging the Chinese man to come to the table, face what's coming to him from a, a desperate but keen Doran. 
He went for the third back up on the trot, missed it by a centimetre wide of the forehand. I think Chris knows that he's playing as well as he can under the current circumstances. I can't believe and how many backhand points getting back. I mean, Chris hits that backhand as hard as anyone in the world, without a doubt. Yeah, so the quieter style is playing a little bit more consistently. Four match points to Huang. Let's, uh... The ball hit the net on the surf, they've got to take it again. Big backhand from Chris. Oh! Serve, follow up, big forehand. Well, that's courage after missing a couple of backhands to come out with that follow up from the serve, Gavin. You've got to give Chris every credit. So, what is your tactic now to close out the game? Do you crash in another one of these fast, long backhand serves? Well, first thing is to make sure he gets the backhand serve back. It's proved tricky, it's the low one. Wangs in and got Chris away from the table. Can Chris get back in? Yes, he can. You can so see Chris brave. nudging himself back towards the table. So brave from Chris, wasn't it? I thought, oh, he's just going to roll, roll this back on, stay in the rally. But no, hits with real power. Bang. No room for hesitancy, Gavin. Surely here you have to set up a fast, long serve into the backhand, run round blind and hit a strong forehand. Let's see what he decides. Bouncy serve. Chris dealt with it, he's away from the table. And Huang takes it. 15-13, 15-13. Chris Doran played a fantastic game, missed just a few big shots by a couple of centimetres. Huang's delighted, the Chinese contingent are delighted. We're going to have an all-Chinese final. An unlucky Chris Doran bows out of the championship but leaves a fascinating final as Liang Zhue prepares to face Huang Junggang for the 2018 World Championship of Ping Pong.